Hello, this is Leanne McGlynn with McGlynn Institute Neonatal. Today in our Neonatal Procedural Skills Series, we'll discuss needle thoracentesis. Ehrlich, otherwise known as a pneumothoraces, in the neonatal population can be a deadly situation. Neonates also have many risk factors that contribute to Ehrlich. These include, but are not limited to, respiratory distress syndrome, mechanical ventilation, sepsis, pneumonia, aspiration of meconium, blood, or amniotic fluid, or a congenital malformation. In addition, spontaneous pneumothoraces can occur in 1-2% to of otherwise normal appearing neonates. In the NICU and on transport, the staff must be prepared to diagnose and treat pneumothoraces in a timely manner. Because of the close proximity of vital structures, supple chest wall, and frail lung tissue, a firm understanding of the anatomy of the chest is imperative. You must realize that the chest contains two lungs and the mediastinal organs and vessels. Both the mediastinum and the chest are lined with two sets of pleura, the visceral and the parietal. The parietal pleura lines the chest wall and the thoracic side of the diaphragm. A continuation of the parietal pleura surrounds the heart and mediastinum. The visceral pleura surrounds the lungs. The primary function of the pleura is protective. In other words, it prevents the lungs from rubbing against the ribs and other organs, avoiding damage by friction, and therefore providing a barrier to infection by sealing one cavity from another. In addition, because each lung has a separate set of pleura, it helps prevent both lungs from collapsing if air enters into one side. Now there's a moistened space between these two pleura, which is known as the pleural cavity. Because of this space, the pleura ride atop each other like two pieces of plastic wrap that have been stuck together with a thin film of liquid. With the right circumstances though, air, blood, chyle, or exudate can enter between the two layers. Neonates have little compensatory reserve when they develop a pneumothorax. Therefore, the NICU staff must be able to quickly and accurately assess a patient in respiratory distress. When this happens, a cascade of signs and symptoms are found upon physical examination, or changes in vital signs may develop. This may include increasing respiratory distress, rapid breathing, grunting, nasal flaring, and chest wall retractions. If a tension pneumothorax has occurred, a patient may be tachycardic, bradycardic, hypotensive, or even cyanotic. Upon auscultation, breath sounds could be decreased over the affected side. In addition, heart sounds may be distanced or muffled or shifted to the opposite side of the pneumothorax with a concurrent shift in the point of maximal impulse. A quick, non-invasive technique to assess for pneumothoraces is transillumination of the chest wall. In this instance, a cool light source is placed against the side of the chest wall with the pneumothorax. The light illuminates or radiates across the chest as seen here, rather than simply forming a halo around the light source. Conclusive evidence for a pneumothorax in the neonate is a chest x-ray. If the neonate has a pneumothoraces, the chest x-ray film will demonstrate air in the pleural space. This air on chest x-ray will appear dark black in the areas where the air is present. In addition, the lung on the affected side will be reduced in size. The heart and the mediastinal contents may be shifted as well. A pneumothorax can be treated in several ways, and if small, non-invasive measures may be considered. But if there is a large or tension pneumo, the first treatment of choice is needle thoracentesis. Equipment and supplies needed include cleanser for the skin per unit policy, a 23 or 25 gauge butterfly, a three-way stopcock, a 5 ml syringe, a 20 ml syringe, as well as gauze. Next, you'll need to place the patient affected side up and choose your landmarks whether it be the second intercostal space, midclavicular line, or the fourth intercostal space, anterior axillary line. Correctly identifying the right side and placing your patient affected side up cannot be overemphasized as it helps the air to rise as seen in this lateral decubitus. If not emergent and time permits, be sure to pre-medicate prior to performing your needle thoracentesis. 
As you prepare mentally to place the needle, remember you will be sliding over the top of the rib, not underneath, in order to avoid the neurovascular bundle. The first demonstration will be the second intercostal space, midclavicular, on the right side. You begin by cleansing the site in a circular motion with a cleanser per unit protocol. Next, you take a gauze, wipe the site, and mark your landmark. Next, you'll take your butterfly and attach it to your 5ml syringe. At this point, you can remove the cover from your butterfly and prepare for needle thoracentesis. Locating your landmark once again, second intercostal space midclavicular, you'll enter the chest going over the rib at a 90 degree angle. You'll go as you pull negative pressure on the syringe and stop advancing when you see air in the syringe. It is at this point that you remove the 5 ml syringe and replace with the 20 ml syringe attached to a three-way stopcock. Make sure that your stopcock is off to the atmosphere as you withdraw air from the chest. You then turn off to the patient and push the air out to the atmosphere. Turn back off to the atmosphere, withdraw again if there's still air in the chest, holding the needle very steady. You then go off to the patient, bow back out to the atmosphere and repeat as needed. Once you have withdrawn all the air from the patient's chest and you're sure there is no more to accumulate, you can then stop withdrawing air, place the gauze over the needle and remove. Now we will demonstrate needle thoracentesis on the right side of the chest using the fourth intercostal space anterior axillary landmark. You begin by cleansing the site in a circular motion with a cleanser per unit protocol. Next, you take a gauze, wipe the site, and mark your landmark. Next, you'll take your butterfly and attach it to your 5 ml syringe. At this point, you can remove the cover from your butterfly and prepare for needle thoracentesis. Locating your landmark once again, fourth intercostal space anterior axillary, you'll enter the chest going over the top of the rib and pulling negative pressure on your syringe as you advance your needle. You'll stop advancing your needle once you have air in your syringe. It is at this point that you remove the 5 ml syringe and replace with the 20 ml syringe attached to a three-way stopcock. Make sure that your stopcock is off to the atmosphere as you withdraw air from the chest. You then turn off to the patient and push the air out to the atmosphere Turn back off to the atmosphere, withdraw again if there's still air in the chest, holding the needle very steady. You then go off to the patient, bow back out to the atmosphere, and repeat as needed. Once you have withdrawn all the air from the patient's chest and you're sure there is no more to accumulate, stop withdrawing air, place the gauze over the needle, and remove. Throughout the procedure, you will want to perform cardiopulmonary monitoring and assess the patient before and after the procedure is completed. You should also consider getting a chest x-ray at this time to ensure the pneumo has resolved or if you need to move on to a chest tube. Now it's your turn. Let us know how this video helped you in your actual practice. Looking for an NRP, procedural skills, or simulation-based training course? McGlynn Institute Neonatal has you covered. Give us a call or text at 704-728-4961 or email Dr. McGlynn at drmcglynn at mcglynninstitute.com. Look forward to hearing from you soon.